UHF above 20 kilohertz. Let's spend a few words on frequencies beyond the audible limit. Trumpet emission is rich of UHF, but pressure measurements are invariably taken at 1 meter on bell axis. During a jazz pop performance with dedicated mix, at 1 inch or less from trumpet bell, acoustical pressure level can easily reach 160 dBs bell. So, recording engineers and stage engineers are forced to cope with this problem by using very low sensitivity electrodynamic mix. But there are a couple of drawbacks. Nonlinear energy flow induced by higher pressure along the trumpet board excite transient noise components, not heard by audience at a great distance, something similar to the piano hammer noise. But the curious thing that nobody takes into account is what I call back shading leaving the player inside an acoustic shadow, unaware of density spectrum of his or instruments. The player doesn't understand and uh, is not an, uh, aware of the density spectrum that is emitting along the axis direct radiation. This is a paradox. Furthermore, electrodynamic microphones are very pure transducer. Moral of the story, a poor sound that no human being ever heard. During a classical performance without dedicated mix, some 20 meters from from stage, the inverse low adds 25 dB losses. Air absorption beyond 20 kHz is roughly 40 dB per 100 meter. Source radiation is practically reduced to few degrees on axis. And summing up all these forgotten losses, and knowing that during a triple F passage, a trumpet can reach 1-1 note dB SPL 1 meter, the diagram should be changed from this to this. Please take note the UHF above 20 kHz. Stay at minus 60 dB from maximum output. Psychoacoustic is everything but simple, and this is the case of masking effect. It's a complex processing of our ear brain, which in the presence of many frequencies, it operates a muffling of higher components. Let's remember that due to matching impedance between source and air load, a musical instrument increases its output at higher pitches. Concerning our trumpet, we could say that a frequency of 1 kHz could be a good starting point to take a fresh look at masking effect. These are masking curves for a stimulus of 1 kHz, and I'll explain you. At different levels, sent to the test subject, each bell shows the covering effect upon adjacent components. So, the greater the masking tone amplitude this value, the larger the masked bandwidth. If the orchestra is playing a triple P, the embracing of the bell at 35 dB SPL, the blue area, is very narrow, so no masking happens. If UHF are present in the density spectrum over here, could they be perceived? No, of course, because we saw previously that the bulk of UHF, if present, stay at minus 60 dB with respect to the fundamental tone. So, during a tribal P at 35 dB SPL, these components are totally non-existent. We have to shift upward the overall intensity level of the orchestra to put ourselves in the best possible perception frame. Let's jump directly to the maximum allowed one level during a tribal F at 1 1 note dB SPL 1 meter from trumpet bell. We see all components over 20 kHz staying minus 60 dB from maximum level are subject to masking effect because all the area is covered. Thus, we can't perceive them. But what about subliminal effects some researchers account for? In a well-known study from National Institute of Multimedia Education, Chabashi, Japan, the research team approached the issue by means of BEAM, Brain Electrical Activity Mapping, using EEG. As test material, an excerpt of Gamelan music of Bali was recorded. Gamelan ensembles plays a set of bronze tunes bars, whose power spectrum is rich of UHF. Test subjects were sitting in front of a loudspeaker system, perfectly aligned with a super tweeter at 2.5 meter distance. Brain activity was recorded by means of EEG probes, while the subjects were listening to the recorded program, with and without UHF by switching the super tweeter on and off. Active cerebral cortex is always enlarged, confirming the original hypothesis of beneficial influence of ultrasounds upon listeners' mind in terms of enhanced audio perception. Well, I have no difficulty in marrying their thesis, 
but they are overestimating the real effect on listeners. Due to erroneous experiments layout, because of unreal subject location. I don't argue about beneficial side effects of UHF. I only say that boundary conditions don't allow concert goers to exploit this advantage. If UHF can modify our super consciousness, it would be possible for the musician only, who must be at very close distance and in front of the UHF source. I had the opportunity to demonstrate my thesis during a Gamelan music concert held in Milan. The concert was recorded by a production crew, so I kindly asked for the permission to wire my possible audio setup. Pickup point was above one of the metallophones, some 1.2 meter on vertical axis. Putting the mic close to the performer's ear was absolutely out of question, fortunately. Note the performers are constantly off axis, receiving lower UHF content with respect to the BNK. The Gamelan metallophone is practically an horizontal flat array of bronze bars because UHF wavelengths span from 7 through 17 millimeters. The instrument is actually a basal array. It is mostly directed along his normal axis toward the microphone. Everything should be the microphone here. Well, the musician does, but in a lesser extent. During post time, I moved my audio gears in the audience recording some five minutes of music. What results did I get? Above 19 kHz, there was no useful audio information at audience recording position. UHF components recorded on stage resemble in a good manner the spectrum employed by the Chiba Shi team. Actually, remember the side-by-side -side layouts of single arrays generating heavy cam filtering. Later, I made a rough PC simulation of metallophone Model as basal array above 20 kHz. Computation showed an acoustic pressure level reduction above 20 kHz of about 12-15 dB. Summing up, UHF beneficial effects can be fully exploited by the performer only. Audience is unaware of super consciousness. There is certainly something still unknown beyond the musical events, but it's something related to the performer only. This is why ancient cultures addressed sacred music. A listener sitting in front of a super tweeter, listening to extra sounds for which he or she has no awareness, is a bad use of technology. A close effect on cerebral activity can be achieved employing ordinary UHF white noise. In both cases, you cannot escape the paradox. You are enhancing your cerebral activity without any creative activity. I'm not again about Super Twitter role in loudspeaker system design. My job is simply to make logic connections among statements.